I've left the van and the trailer on the road because I didn't want to drive in here and then have problems with the uh, padlock uh, because I don't fancy reversing out of there. So let's try and see if I can get the gate open and then we'll drive through. Awesome. New code every, well, every so often really. So we're going to get ourselves into the club. I think the worst of the rain today is past, although it does look a little bit <laughs> weathery over there, um, but it's lovely and warm. That's the main thing. Uh, it's lovely and warm. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter if you get wet, if it's nice and warm. A little bit, a little bit of water in there, isn't there? But it's okay. It gets quite deep quite quickly though. And we're gonna to have to be very careful getting the boat in because it could go over or cross the, the, uh, the dock there. So yeah, we'll have to be a little bit careful today. It's empty, absolutely empty. I think we're the first people down here to be honest with you. Uh, I've been told uh, that there's been a lot of work been going on down here, a lot of clearing of the shoreline. Uh, so, you know, hopefully, I mean, it, it looks like a lot of change. Look at these bushes all being culled. Looks like there's a lot more room here, doesn't there? Uh, but I kind of, it saddens me sometimes. I know, you know, the club's got to kind of move on and make money and, you know, we've had new members and things like that. But I do uh, get saddened when they chop all the bushes and it, it loses its sort of, it loses its intimacy almost. So, uh, yeah, that's, it is a little bit sad when that happens, but you know, you got to do it. And this is the slipway, you, you know, you we've all, come to know and love. So let's check out what's going on here. Got to be careful, I'm in, my, I'm in my civilian clothes and it's very wet here. Don't want to get my trainees wet. But there you go. Now that is my mooring buoy and the, the, moor, the little, what's it called? The grab buoy or whatever it's called is definitely still there. Gonna leave all the uh, all my stuff here because um, I need to clear the camper van out anyway. I, I don't know where I am <laughs> at the moment, so black shorts, <laughs> new shorts. So uh, we're gonna uh, give the blue ones a little rest, but I'm sure they'll make a comeback at some stage. Someone else over there, come down, give them a quick wave. We've got Lulu largely ready. I forgot the floorboards. I left them down the bottom there, so I think we'll be okay. We've got the uh, the plug, <laughs> mustn't forget to put that in. I've got the engine over, over here somewhere. There we go. The engine key, which remember I forgot last year. Oh, that, was, that was a nightmare. And I think we could pretty much take her in down to the mooring like this. I think we're okay. Since I got this really cheap in the sales, so um, it's uh, Gill Race Fusion, and I got the Salapets to to match it. Um, I got them this. I got the jacket less than half price, and the Salapets more even more than that. Um, so I'm really chuffed with it. I just needed something waterproof when I'm on the dinghy, uh, especially going out on on the sea and maybe trying to sail in a bit worse weather. So yeah, you got to kind of have the right kit. Otherwise, you can get yourselves into trouble. I'm checking how cold it is. And that water, I'm not going to lie, I've got to get out now. It's absolutely freezing. Oh, my God. Like, to the point, just that 30 seconds in the water has is hurting my feet. So, I'm in the camper van. Rain's really coming in now. Look at that. So, I don't know, just best to keep out the rain. Uh, it's got a little bit colder and a bit windier, so just goes to show how the uh, the weather can change. Um, 
let's make a cup of coffee. I've got a few things to show you in here. So let's get dry and let's uh, have a look at those. Well, you've already seen my Nano Presso, but I've had to buy a new one, unfortunately. Uh, long story short, it's really old. My Nano Presso is the original um, Kickstarter one. Um, so that even the, the, the the, the uh, materials it was made out of were, weren't that real finished product and it's finally got dropped and, and it's cracked and we couldn't screw the top up. I have tried to fix it and I think I may have fixed it but the other reason is the newer ones when you're using the Nespresso capsules what I was finding with my old one was I was getting a lot of we Oh, well, we'll have to get them in it. I was getting a lot of granules in the coffee and it was just making, it was just minging, to be honest with you. This is the new Nespresso thing and it's completely different and it's also not worn out. Apparently, you can wear these out and after sort of 10 years, I think mine was worn out. Now, I didn't know you could buy the middle bits on their own, which is a pain. So I got the whole thing, um, but the newer ones of these have got so many improvements that I'm kind of hoping that, um, you know, will be, you know, it'll be much better. So um, the other thing is, is um, I got, so that was three things. So I've bought, so I've got the the Nespresso capsule in the innards for this. But the other good thing is that um, I've got this. This is called the Barista. And this is this just comes with a load of stuff, like little pre-made coffee capsules to make cappuccinos, double shots, espressos. It comes with a larger cup. So you can just, you know, I'll definitely put that on the, the bottom there and use that for my cup today. Um, and it comes with, you know, like a much bigger water container. So it's really good this. It's, uh, and it was only 30 pounds and I, I treated myself. So we're gonna set this up now and we're gonna make ourselves a lovely cup of coffee. I've got me milk. I'm gonna get me milk frother out and everything. And we're going to, uh, yeah, we're gonna have a good time with this, I think. There we go. Well, it makes a decent cappuccino as well there. Huh, little love heart in there, accidental. Okay. There we go. Mmm. That's good, it's nice. Let's get the mizzen on. Business quite easy to get in. There we go. Main sail and gaff that can just pop here for now. And here's all the sticks and the bumpkin the hole, shall I say? So there's the bumpkin inserted. Now you'll notice because I cut out this hole and then put some leather here we can actually retract the bumpkin quite easily here and then wiggle it in insert it where it should be and that's actually a tighter fit than it's ever been so that's really cool now if I have any problems with the bumpkin I don't have to lean over the back of the boat anymore I can just come to here retract retract the bumpkin and do what I need to do from sort of here not lent over which is brilliant So that just secures the mast while we're messing around. It means it doesn't need the shrouds or the four stay connected. Now, now when we're camping, I've realized something. If we're gonna make a tent and we've got the shrouds basically coming in like this, 
then that's going to be a bit of a problem for the tent so either we're going to have to make a tent where the shrouds kind of go through it which is going to be a real pain or we can't really have the tent stopping forward of there can we or we have the tent that goes inside but as you can see that's going to be a little bit of a it's just not going to work is it so i think what a lot of people i've seen do is they take the shrouds out um, make them good against the mast and then they can pitch their tent right up against the mast and then the the, the, the shroud is the, the mast isn't going to go this way anyway because it's got the it'll have the force state keeping it up but it just has this to give it a little bit of extra well really you just need to keep it in this slot and it shouldn't go side to side you know <laughs> or at least that's the theory You can tell it's spring because there's loads of bugs suddenly appearing. Get those nice and tight. And then there we go. Good. That's one mast and halyards for the spinnaker and the jib sorted. Let's give the jib a quick, or the furler mechanism, should I say, uh, a quick test. So this is the furling line. And then. Here's one jib sheet. Just go through this fair lead and through here. And then I think there's no reason why we can't figure out eight knot bows now. There we go. So we... there we go. Oh, it's... So that's fully out. And then let's furler back in. There we go. Alright, that's that. One halyard one main sheet. So that can go there for you in a minute. Now, the halyard needs us to do a new knot that I haven't been using. Um, where this line attaches to the halyard, I've actually just been using a round turn and two half hitches, which has been fine. But when you want to reef and the ch you want to change the chocks quite quickly, um, a round turn two half hitches isn't isn't ideal, should we say? So there's a new knot that we need to use. It's like really it's so simple, and I've been shown it by uh, Steve Porteous. Go and check his channel out. Um, he's an amazing lugger sailor. He's helped me an absolute ton, and he showed me this. He's actually got a short video on how to do this as well. Um, so bear with me. I'm going to just. Um, get my phone to just relearn it and I will show you how you do it. Oh, look at this. First big plane of the season. That's low. That's a Hercules. That's a Hercules. I suspect with all that's going on in Ukraine, we're going to be seeing quite a lot of uh, war planes flying over here. Uh, this season we saw a fair share last season probably yeah. regretfully I mean they're good fun to find and look at but obviously the the reason they're doing it isn't great fun is it it is I think it's just called a halyard knot now let's uh, do this show you this night properly so this is going to pull this way and there's the knot now the idea of this knot is look you can loosen it move it to where you want it to be ah although we've got to be careful of the of this here it's very easy to undo and do up so let's show you how you do it um, so you start this way you go over around and you go around twice like this and then you need to have make sure you've got enough line on this side you go over the halyard line and then double back under those two lines those two ones you got there so you got a little loop and then pull it tight now to me that doesn't look does it it doesn't look like it's going to hold anything but i'm reliably told that is what the experienced guys do and then that should hold like that uh we've got to get the halyard for the gaff <laughs> through the top of there so mass is going to have to come down now next job is getting the, the gaff up so here we go now 
there we go and then we literally can pull this up now like this there we go now normally we put a few peral beads on there just pull this through and, and cleat it off but today we're not going to worry about that just now more of our friends up there one of the training jets here's the uh, bilge pump handle let's just give this bilge pump a quick whirl look at that you can see just how rigid and solid that is I'm really chuffed that was a big job that we had to do that was strengthening the deck under there these are my spinnaker sheets identical don't need to worry about which one's which I'm gonna put all my sheets and lines in this locker here because that's where they've always been and here's my mooring lines they can go in there too there we go and I've got these new mooring lines which I'm not even I'm not gonna open until I need to they can go in there too um, I've got a new sponge because um, sponges are very useful on board this one's just about seen better days so let's replace that with that in fact to be frank we may as well keep both of them there's, there's still a bit of life in that that can just go in there uh, let's get the uh, compass on let's go there we go it's a good spot that I think that's for me phone there family peral beads so we can put those out that on in a minute this is my masthead float but I also use it for general float you know swim it's actually a swim float so what we can do is general paraphernalia I think for now we'll put in this back locker with all the poles sort of in the front there there's plenty of room this is a little bag this got my Rolox in and my emergency horn that ideally needs to keep dry but it can go in there for now I didn't I didn't um, have time to make any dinner so uh, I've had to buy it today but this isn't very unlike me buying my my lunch uh, I don't really like these I don't, bought sandwiches I think they're a bit grossy but there we go so I've just got this New York style deli I figured if I'm buying some food I may as well go for beef something I never ever really eat and I've gone for a Mars bar just for the energy because I'm starving yeah they look all right actually nice brown bread to be fair mm, not bad actually Excuse me, while I'm having lunch, I just put the peral bead up there. Now, can you see how that's had the effect of keeping the gaff nice and tight? Some people put two in, and it means the gaff will just slide up and down rather than kind of lever over. Um, I've got quite a, I've got another couple of those, so I think when you're you're attached to the reefing block at the top there, I think um, that then you know the more you have the better so there we go uh, so I've fed that through just behind there like that and we'll just we'll just tie it off like there and then let's see if we've got it about there then I think that's more than enough we can maybe give it a little bit more give it a little bit more there we go and then we'll just tie that off I wonder if we could just do a, a knot in there. No, no. So we'll tie that off. Like this. A bit like we've done with that spinnaker halyard there. And then round and through again. There we go so that should keep that nice and sound and then we can tighten that up like that and it's controlled with the cleat nice and tight now we've got this little bit of rope then which we can use to quickly tie
untie the mast if we need to so we can quickly attach that like that and to be honest with you we could just leave it like that you know for now and then you know we need access to these lines though but that can go like that I don't know it's worth a little thought but for now what we'll do we'll just I don't know we'll just stick it down here because it needs to be out the way really that there you go Monel Seizing White, another uh, really good piece of advice from one of the subscribers. Um, I'm just going to use this to keep the little pin in because I'm just going to lose this sooner or later. So hopefully you can see from there. So well, I've got the Monel wire out. I'm just getting my anchors out. And actually these are my three anchors that I've got that I use on the boat. Here's this one you know quite well, the new Danforth. Um, I think it's a four kilo, which is about right for the boat. This is this came with the boat, it's a grapple anchor, and that is actually really good on Lake Barla because the bottom's all stony and it works quite well. And I actually keep that under the floorboards. And this is, I think it's a Bruce anchor, and this is the one I use mostly because I just really love it. It works so well. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my. Um, I've noticed I've got no no um chain to speak of on on this one so i'm actually gonna change the chains over i'm gonna change the chain from the uh, grapple with the um with the bruce and i'm gonna keep the bruce on board in the bucket this is going to be on deck and that one will either take with us or we won't because i think if we've got that one and this one we should be more than than happy with anchors uh, I'm not going to manel wire this because I think I'm going to replace this with one of my new bow shackles. So this can now go back in the bucket. So let's see how we get on. I'm going to find the end of the rope first. <laughs> there we go. And that's got a bow line on it ready to go. And then all I'm doing with this to make it nice and tidy is just wrapping it around the bucket like this. So it's kind of not, it's not, like, not perfect, but you should flake your anchor road out before you use it anyway. And I'm hoping that will be a bit better than the anchor. And this anchor and these two shackles will we'll just go and put in my spare parts bin and this will go home for now let's pop that in its little rightful place just there that bucket's also my emergency bailing bucket because um, a little baler that you use for the mirror is good for getting little bits of water out but it isn't any good if you get any decent swell in here right let's sort this rudder out so I'm going to show you how this rudder stock works actually let me just give myself a little bit of room there let's check this fits now oh god it's so close okay. yeah it just needs to be a bit further down but you can see now how this works look so that will go in the middle Oh. Ah. You need to put it in first and then insert it from the back like that. There you go. And then that should stop it. There you go. That's brilliant, I like that. Right. I'm going to use this uh, Gorilla Glue because it's blooming brilliant and I'm going to get these blocks stuck to here because I'm going to be waiting so long if, if I don't do it now. So I'm going to put plenty of glue on them and do one, whoopsie. That, there we go. There 
There we go. And I'm hoping they'll just stay there and behave themselves. The pack raft is blown up. Literally took me five minutes just chatting to someone, just, you know, casually blowing up. Not even that. Uh, so I've got that little pillow you sit on. So that will keep the cold off a little bit. We'll just give it a go. We'll see how we go. Right, we're kitted up. And I'm actually getting really hot. Uh, pack raft here, tadpoles here. All ready to go. Got a bit of water. <laughs> I, uh, I've only just been able to put the camera on. I'm holding it with my feet. <laughs> so hopefully you can see me. Uh, I've actually paddled all the way from the club. I'm nearly at my mooring, I think. I'm coming up to my mooring now. I'm 10 meters away, I'm closing. And I don't wanna puncture the boat <laughs> with, with whatever is still hopefully hanging on the bottom of my little boy. So, we're approaching the boy now. We're about two meters from the and we're windward. We're downwind of it. There we go. You can control this canoe so easy. There we go. Aha! So there's one. One strop. Yuck. Green as you like. So everything else is fine. Let's check the shackle. Shackle's completely fine. We want to keep that away from the boat if possible. Apart from being filthy, apart from being filthy, my uh, shrop is still there, which is the main thing. That's a winter's worth of gunge on it. Quite enjoyed the little paddle, even though it's a bit of hard work. I'm going to see if I can actually, let's see if we can give that a quick clean anyway. I can like just give it a I mean, that's giving it a half clean. I'm getting it all in the thing now. I reckon, I reckon, look at that already. I reckon if you just got a bit of a brush on that, it'd be fine. So it's nice to know it's all ready to go. When we get the chance, we'll also put someone else seizing wire in that as well. But uh, I'm gonna go for a quick paddle now. I can see uh, one of the lo ex other lugger guys over there. We'll go and see if we can see him. Look how far I've come. I've literally like 10, 10 sort of pump uh, uh, paddles and we're miles away. Look how we're drifting. I'm sat up a little bit up front of the boat and I don't think it likes it. So I'm gonna shuffle back a little bit. I'm not gonna do too much because I don't wanna fall in. But uh, we're gonna make our way back. We're gonna get Lulu in. She's in. That was so easy to, I don't know why I was even worried about launching her. Here we go, we're off. So, bye. <laughs> it's nowhere near as bad as you think. It's actually, the heavens just opened. But you can see down there, we've got a load of sun coming as well now. So, I think uh, at the beginning of every season, you just get a bit, um, you lose your confidence. You just lose your, you forget is basically it. Uh, and once you're on the water and you're on there, you know, you're on the water for you know, an hour or two, your brain remembers. It goes, oh, hang on a minute. I remember this weird wibbly wobbly, feel like you're going to fall in feeling, but you're nowhere near. So yeah, I get it every season. I don't think I'm the only person that gets it. Right, so you might not be able to make out now because of the sun, but the, oh boy, my mooring is dead ahead. We're making our way. So we're going to cut the engine now. And then we'll grab that, there we go. Just hold on to that and life is good. And then all we need to do, oh, <laughs> that'll teach me to leave it all winter is bring this up the strop up to the front so i'm going to switch the camera off now because i do need uh both hands 
Look at that rainbow. Hey, beautiful. Right, so we're all uh, we're all moored up. There we go. Nice and easy, to be honest with you. Oh, we don't. It takes ages when you're just not quite knowing what you're doing to pack the boat up. So we're all packed up. We're all tidied away. There's only one thing to do, and that is to try and get into this canoe. Now, I don't want to lose all my stuff. So I've got a water bottle there, which is, you know what? If I lose that, it's not the end of the world. I've noticed it's going down a little bit. Might be from the cold. Uh, hello. <laughs> I'm going to put my gloves on. And then I thought we may as well, may as well actually paddle all the way back because it was quite pleasant rather than getting out here. And then we'll just get changed and go home. It's been a bit of an eventful day. It's always a bit stressful the first day back on the lake, you know, getting up back on your mooring and trying to work out all the new things, you know, and there's loads of people around and yeah, nice to chat to people, but it's also stressful sometimes, you know, just want to get things done and whatnot. So, you know, it takes a week or two just to get into the swing of everything. Now, I'm going to put this on my arm because I don't want to lose another camera <laughs> and now I'm going to try and get in here so wish me luck I'm going to leave the camera rolling but you're not going to see much I don't think all right right so there we go oh look you can see that my foot goes right down I'm just going to have to go for it there we go well actually that was okay should we be cheeking see if we can actually get out No, we're gonna leave that for another day. Let's not push our luck. So, I'm gonna get the line off, get the paddle, and we're gonna go home. There she is, bye bye Lulu. Hopefully see you next week, my darling. She looks super happy, doesn't she? She's beautiful, we've proper renovated her. And she's back where she belongs, on Lake Bala. Although, she's really happy that we're gonna be, uh, we are going to be going a bit further afield this season. Right, I'm going to paddle home, or back to the van. I'm going to get this wretched wetsuit off. I'm going to have a wee, and I'm going to go home. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, as always. And I will catch you in the next one. We've got a lot to do in the next video. Uh, you know fitting the boat out as well as testing quite a few things so i'm hoping we get some good weather for spinnaker flying and uh some good weather for uh autopiloting so there's loads to come um keep watching and uh, i'll hopefully keep you entertained bye bye